Hello everyone, this is Alan from Technology Moments. Welcome back to our videos dedicated to fiber optics, a topic that finally is increasingly needed as optic fiber runs are present everywhere in homes, campuses, schools, big or small companies, and of course where data throughput and integrity as well as distance is needed. We have seen how important optic fiber is today and maybe the most important aspects to highlight and that we have mentioned here are first, that it is immune to magnetic fields, hence crosstalk, and electromagnetic discharges caused by lightning. This is actually a nightmare for many dealing with big discharges that come from outside the building and that reach equipment rooms and that even with lightning surge protectors spread across the network to remote cabinets and workstations, damaging motherboards and critical components in your network, we've seen that several times. As you may know, it is very unlikely, at least with current technology, to go beyond 10 gigabit per second using copper cables due to its inherent limitations. But fiber optics has gone beyond what we thought was gonna be available for small company servers, as we've seen in our videos about 25 gigabit per second network cards, providing a performance beyond your current needs, but not so far from what many network administrators have to deal with today for huge network backups where gigantic multimedia files are present. That is the case of newspapers, TV stations, content creators, and wherever ultra-high definition video and audio is being created and stored. That's why we'll start seeing more and more SFP Plus ports in NASA's devices where many users may converge nowadays as they are very convenient. Copper, like we said, poses more challenges than solutions when handling a lot of concurrent connections, uh, such as crosstalk, and the huge disadvantage of electronic interference, something that with fiber you only have to deal with in equipment rooms. Without further ado, we continue with our topic. In this chapter of fiber optics, we'll talk about signal attenuation or insertion loss, which is mostly an undesired loss of signal power through any cable run. Also, in some cases, it is actually necessary to attenuate the signal and equipment may be protected by doing so when two strong signals are generated from two powerful transceivers designed, of course, for very distant fiber optic clients or switches. When used in shorter distances, that excess of power may saturate, causing signaling to corrupt. That same excess of power may even damage the sensor on the other end of the cable. Splices either by fusion or mechanical joints, absorption, scattering, sharp bends, and impurities are factors that increase signal attenuation. All this is particularly important now that we continue to implement fiber optics in our homes and businesses. That's why in this series of videos, we'll learn how to mechanically fix cable runs, terminate patch cables, and very important when doing this, measuring how our signal was affected by doing so. For this, we're gonna be using non-expensive equipment that has become more and more popular every day. This video is gonna be oriented for those of you seeking a cost-effective way of maintaining your network infrastructure and are starting to migrate to fiber optics. I will leave you the links in the description for the equipment that we'll be using today, which is this optical power meter and diagnostic tool, which came with a whole set of optic fiber tools. This is something that I've found to be interesting as well as useful and may be very helpful for many who are in charge of any simple fiber optic infrastructure. Most brands and models, by the way, work very similarly. Let's suppose that we need to measure signal attenuation in this network segment from this equipment to this other end of the connection, or at least up to this LC connector. We'll have to have very clear which segment we're evaluating and we need to know which transceiver is generating the signal. This is something that is very important. Let's remember that we may be many kilometers away from the other end. It is not an option to very quickly go and check which transceiver I have at the other end in case a real failure occurs. Remember, organization and documenting your equipment is the key. We then set the appropriate wavelength or lambda in our equipment. We're gonna connect the receiving end. Let's remember one of the fibers is gonna be receiving and the other one is gonna be transmitting. That is gonna be a little different if we're gonna be using bidirectional equipment. So we'll be using this SC to LC connector, plug it into our equipment and we'll be reading both the linear milliwatt reading and the logarithmic scale in decibels. According to what you should be expecting at that end, you may want or not to include an attenuator. Let's for example include one. Let's include this 10 decibel attenuator in this segment and we'll check that our equipment is detecting the same variation. It is a very good practice when we do this and do not have an alternate reference equipment and we want to know if we are calibrated reading that loss. 
Signal attenuators have been present since cable-based radio signals were used, either analog or digital, to preserve data integrity. In older technologies with coaxial cable-based network for simultaneous use of data and TV, still widely used around the world, it was critical. But the real damage in that scenario, from a very strong signal, was data integrity. Equipment had to retransmit and that was perceived as a slow network. There is not a universally accepted minimum or lowest acceptable dB reading, much less there is going to be a maximum. It all depends on the infrastructure, the application, and what you consider in your own line of work to be acceptable levels of bandwidth, latency, jitter, or retransmission due to packet loss. Also important to note here is that different wavelengths experience different degrees of attenuation. That's why when picking up the fiber optic cable is necessary to pay special attention to the attenuation per kilometer that you're gonna experience. And as you may wonder, this is more important in single mode runs as they are designed from a few hundred meters or even closer up to tens of kilometers where signal readings at the source and decibels of course may even be in the positive scale. If you need to have a point of comparison which is ideal, you can use the transceiver and a very short fiber patch cable which has to be of course in perfect condition, well protected, to set the standard to which you're gonna compare. Set it as a reference using this button and then any reading that you do from that point is gonna be referenced to that short patch fiber cable. Very useful. In optic fiber, a very strong signal, say for example a 10 km, 40 km or even an 80 km transceiver that is connected to an equipment that is too close and not at the distance that it was designed for, may lead to that other transceiver sensors to be damaged. Of course this by such a strong signal. So in case that you get a positive decibel reading here, it may be quite beneficial for your equipment to install one or several signal attenuators. Exclusively talking about optic fiber, attenuators have a very specific use of preserving not only data integrity, but also physical contact integrity. Also, if contacts have lost quality due to the presence of dust, for example, it even may result in that contact melting. Talking about that, it's important to keep contacts clean with a cleaning solution. This is very important in more powerful links. Also, when implementing mechanical splicing in a fiber optic section, something that we'll see in a future video, it is important to, to keep such contacts clean and perfectly aligned as such imperfections may lead to a ruined joint where a mechanical splicer or terminal is present. Mechanical splicing is never gonna have the same optic quality as the fusion splicing, but poses three main advantages faster installation, no advanced skills required, and it is substantially less expensive for small deployments. As the only disadvantage is degradation in the signal due to signal loss compared to well-achieved fusion splicing, that is exactly where this signal attenuation reading may become very handy. Okay guys, hope this video was informative enough for you and brings you closer to manage effectively your fiber optic implementations now that they have become so popular. We also hope it encourages you to keep learning. Remember your great support comes from your valuable subscription to our channel and liking this video. See you next time and as we always say, good luck with your projects.